they say luck is when preparation meets opportunity. For the city of Columbus, Indiana, opportunity is knocking. This small town, famous for producing some of the world's most incredible people, is about to share another gift to the world. This is the journey of the Columbus North Marching Band as they make their way to play on one of the world's biggest stages, the inaugural parade in Washington, D.C. Their hours of practice, choreography, and talent are going to be seen by millions. These students are about to share the heart of Columbus. This city of opportunity presents the Sound of North. The Sound of North's journey to Washington, D.C. begins right here in Columbus, Indiana, a city of 45,000 people that is truly unexpected and unforgettable. The people that are here in Columbus that populate the town, I mean, they're, they're interesting to work with, uh, many accomplished folks who, uh, you know, make life a little better for all of us. And I think, you know, you sort of see also the backdrop. I mean, uh, the community itself is a, uh, a pleasant place. and. Uh, and that just sort of adds to the fact that Columbus is a great place to live. Columbus is a fabulous community. By all the people that pull together and all the various attributes of Columbus, uh, we're fortunate to have uh, the, the activity in Columbus with all the, the patriots, I'll call them, who pull together whenever there's a need. And uh, this was another good example of the Columbus patriots, we'll call them, pulling together for a monumental effort for a very historic event. The fabric that makes up Columbus is not only based on their people, but also their environment. The fact is, the American Institute of Architects ranks Columbus, Indiana as the sixth most architecturally important city in the country, right behind Washington, D.C. Yeah, a few years ago I was in Japan and I was talking to some of the executives of one of the Japanese-owned companies that's here in town and we got onto the subject of Columbus's motto, you know, and we say we're unexpected and unforgettable. But a little later in the conversation we also began to talk about architecture and I mentioned that Columbus was the sixth ranked uh, architecturally significant city in the United States and the guy sort of looked at me and said, really? You know, right behind D.C., District of Columbia. And, and he sort of got it, that at that point, the Columbus was a little bit more special than what he'd realized. Some of the challenges from preparing for the parade uh, was logistics of the parade, number one. Um, that was probably uh, the things that I kind of took over was uh, trying to make sure we had enough money. I had to uh, keep in contact with Milo Smith and ask him, you know, uh, what we need to do. And um, he just was incredible as far as raising the money. When the band director called me and said, Milo, do you think you can get us an invitation to march in the inaugural? And I said, Bill, I don't know, but I'm going to see the vice president, President Pence, tomorrow, and I'll ask him. So when I saw Mike, I said, what do you think of, can we get an invitation for the North Band to march in the inaugural parade? And he said, absolutely. His eyes got great big, and he said, make that happen, Milo. And I said, well, I may need a little help from you. And he said, you've got it. I also dealt with Music Travel, who was coordinating the trip and trying to get reserving rooms and uh, getting the room list to, this, to them. Uh, they had also talked about the coaches, how many coaches we're going to need, what we want to do while we're on the trip. So all that was uh, kind of lo big logistics. We actually started that before we knew we were going to go, uh, just because I felt like the community was going to support us. But uh, we just didn't know at the time. But we thought if we waited too long, it wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to get hotel rooms and, and coaches. So uh, we went ahead and did that. And then um, after that's done, then there's, of course, the logistics of pulling off the performance and um, working with uh, the students and getting the students uh, prepared to perform. My role was specifically getting the group ready to perform, uh, running the rehearsals and 
um, just making sure that all the elements could play their music, uh, spin their color guard work, uh, and then making sure that everybody was up to speed on marching. We had a few kids that don't march with us either because they're fall athletes or they are you know, in front ensemble that don't have a marching role. So we had to make sure that they were caught up, up to speed. But that, that was generally it, just making sure the band was in good uh, performing position. You know, my pride for these kids is just, uh, it's a continual thing. I, I'm very proud of these students all the time. It's just, it's a joy to have my position. Uh, you know, I, I know other people would love to be in my position, other band directors. Uh, these, these students are the best, as far as I'm concerned, in the country. Uh, they just uh, work um, to what we expect every time, and a lot of times go way beyond what we, what we expect. So these kids are just uh, fabulous, and it's a great um, honor to be the director of bands at Columbus North High School. The final days leading up to the parade were wet and cold, so practice was held indoors. The school was filled with excitement. All the students knew they had a big job to do, so they made best with what they had. The hallways became their parade route. The school was their field, and they used every inch of it. Luckily, after the few days of rain, the skies opened up and it was out to the field to practice. It was cold and windy, but they pushed through it. On the final night of practice, parents and the community came out to watch and support the band. This was the final practice before leaving for Washington, D.C. a better group of students to represent our, our, our school and our, our city in, in such a prestigious event. Um, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a great time. There's going to be a lot of memories made. They'll never forget. And it's going to be a pretty awesome opportunity to perform in that stage. So thanks again so much. Not only was the band to play at the inaugural parade, but a day before their planned departure, a phone call came from the inaugural committee wanting them to play a special performance. This meant instead of leaving on Wednesday, they had to arrive on Wednesday. After all their time together, this wasn't just a band leaving, but a family. So on the buses up to the inauguration, everyone was super excited. About half of us were sleeping, but about half of us like could not sleep at all. We were all bouncing off the walls, just really excited. Even the night there, once we were at the inauguration, we couldn't sleep at all. Most of us were up all night. After a 13-hour bus ride, they had made it to our nation's capital. With no rest from the trip, they immediately snuck in the inaugural committee's headquarters for a private surprise performance.
After taking a lap around the upstairs offices, they headed back downstairs to the auditorium to perform for the entire committee staff. It's awesome to see, really exciting to be a Columbus North grad and seeing your high school band, you know, going to DC and doing these huge things and um, you just feel a lot of pride in the fact that it's your school, right? That's the school that you went to and they're there and they're doing these great things and that you're kind of a part of it too in a way. These kids are uh, really special members of our community. Uh, they uh, are students that have developed their skills through music and the self-discipline it takes to be in a music program. They also have a kind of, they develop a kind of sense of uh, belonging and uh, I guess ownership to the program. And then they also co uh, commit a lot of hours to community, uh, helping in many, many ways. It's my observation both with my siblings and with my children that the social skills and interactions that occurred growing up gave us a confidence to go out into the world and not be afraid or feel we were limited in any way, whether we were in New York, Chicago, other countries. There's something special about Columbus that you go out into the world with a self-confidence that I've, my observation is not everybody from every community feels that way. Columbus is a city of opportunity in that there are no boundaries that I can feel here um, and there are no uh, criticisms. It's a very accepting town. Besides the parade, it was really great to see all the places that we read about in our history books, like all the memorials and all the monuments. Just being able to see them in person and experience that, it was incredible. I want to thank the students for making Columbus proud. For the most part, they knew that it was something that was just bigger than them. You know, it was it's not, not always political, you know. It's, hey, I went to D.C. and I played in the inauguration. How many people can say that? So when they went by, that was the loudest screaming and applause and excitement in the viewing stand of any band or any organization that went by the presidential viewing stand. And even the president looked over at Mike and gave him double thumbs up when Columbus North came by because everyone knew what an effort, uh, what a challenge it is and how long they had to wait in line and, and get there early. So that, that was the most exciting part of the entire parade. I think it really hit me, kind of choked me up a little bit when we had turned on to 
uh, Pennsylvania Avenue and I looked back toward the, the band and saw the Capitol up the street all illuminated and it just hit me, you know, this, this really is a huge deal and you know, we're here in the middle of it. I want to thank the community for not just coming to support us during our practices, but also like the night of the actual inauguration, just sitting there watching us, watching the TV, waiting for the Columbus North Band just to, to, to march in front of the president himself and just supporting us all the way through from when we left, before we left, to when we left, to when we got back. I, Michael Richard Pence, do solemnly swear I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. But I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. Mr. Vice President, this one's for you. The next marching band, The Sound of North, hails from Vice President Michael Pence's high school, alma mater, the Columbus North High School in Columbus, Indiana. A 10-time Indiana Marching State Band Finalist. The 19-time Indiana Concert Band Finalist. On behalf of my whole family, to the Sound of North, to CNHS, to the whole Columbus community, thank you for being part of such a special day in our family's life and a special day in the life of this nation. We're so proud to see you there and we'll always be grateful. Go Bulldogs. <laughs>